like that, you know, Michael Rolfson and today I'm going to be talking about a new treatment for NAION, um, which is intravitreal bevacizumab and topical aqueous suppressants. Um, I know I'm kind of hopping on Dr. Najia's tail here, uh, already talking about a different treatment for this, but I think it just goes to show that this is something that we're needing a treatment for right now. So kind of where we stand with NAION is it's relatively common. There's incidence of estimated 80 per 100,000, and it can be potentially devastating to patients' visions. The theorized path to physiology is compromised microcirculation to the optic disc um, in eyes that have structural crowding of the disc. And this leads to kind of a presumed uh, compartment syndrome where there's infarction in the scler scleral canal alone. And this is confirmed on histologic studies in patients with NION. What this leads to is um, primarily disc edema. It can be segmental or diffuse, but it's seen in almost all patients or all patients. And this becomes uh, atrophic in six to eight weeks, but the disc edema is there initially. Visual acuity is poor, is worse than 2,240% of patients, but it is better than 2,260%. And once it hits its worst uh, vision, there are majority of patients who stay at their worst vision. However, there have been studies that show that up to 40, 43% of patients have some improvement, just natural history after NAION. And with all of this um, being common and being uh, visually devastating, there are no reliable treatments, although some have been um, proposed, including optic nerve sheath fenestration, which is actually shown to be worse for patient outcomes. Neuroprotective drugs have been looked at, but they have not been um, any evidence that those are effective. Oral prednisone has been used, but that also doesn't have good literature to support it. So a uh, new idea that we're looking at is uh, addressing this compartment syndrome I talked about of the optic nerve. There's two different theories we're kind of drawing upon here. The first one is uh, intravitreal anti-VEGF, and we're using bevacizumab. This was first looked at by a group in Denver led by Bennett in 2007. They had this theory that because of the compartment syndrome of the nerve, using anti-VEGF could decrease the vasogenic edema and therefore relieve some pressure on the optic nerve. So they had a patient come in she had count fingers vision. They gave her intravitreal avastin, and 10 days later, her vision had improved to 2070. And that was kind of the first published report of intravitreal anti-VEGF for NAION. It was looked at a little bit more in 2013 by a group in Turkey led by Sachi, and they had a retrospective review. Um, there were a total of 17 eyes with NAION, and in this case, they used intravitreal lucentis. And they didn't have any controls, but they did find in all eyes they had a um, statistically significant improvement in vision. They also tracked the RNFL thickness, and that was shown to be decreased, uh, presumably from decreased vasogenic edema, um, after intravitreal lucentis. The other arm of previously investigated treatment for NAION that we combined here is topical aqueous suppressants. Probably the biggest um, study looking at this was by a group in Germany uh, with Willem, where they looked at bromonidine more for its neuroprotective effects than for IOP lowering. And they had a retro, or a, I'm sorry, a double blinded control study with 36 patients, and they found a non statistically significant visual improvement after NAON with uh, bromonidine. But the important part there is that they also did not find that it worsened outcomes. So we're thinking that maybe using topical aqueous suppressants with the anti-VEGF could be a synergistic way to lower the compression on the optic nerve tissue. So our methods in this study was the case series using um, the retina consultants of Alabama's electronic records. We did a chart review from April 2014 through December of 2015. There were five patients who came in with NAION. All of them received intravitreal bevacizumab or Avastin and four of those five also had topical aqueous suppressants. We'll just briefly look at these patients, um, all coming in with NAION. The first had good vision, 2025, but um, visual field loss. The patient received intravitreal avastin and topical aqueous suppressants, and a month later, the disc edema had resolved, and vision was still good with resolution of the subjective field losses. Second patient had vision of count fingers and disc edema. They received intravitreal avastin and topical aqueous suppressants, and in one week, the vision had improved all the way to 2025. Next patient, 
Count Finger's vision and optic nerve edema, also had macular star in this case. Uh, this patient only received intravitreal avastin, no topical aqueous suppressants here. In five weeks, the disc edema was resolved and visual acuity was 2400, and at three months, visual acuity was 150. Fourth patient had count fingers vision, optic nerve edema, received intravitreal avastin and topical aqueous suppressants. At three weeks, the vision was 2200 with resolution of disc edema, and at four months, vision was 2100. And the, the fifth case had vision of 2080. The fundus exam was normal, but FA did show leakage from the optic nerve consistent with NAION. They received intravitreal avastin and topical aqueous suppressants, and at one month, the vision was 2060 with resolution of disc edema. So this is just kind of a big chart looking, big picture of the results. All the patients had the classic disc edema, which is what we're treating with the anti-VEGF. They had visual acuity loss or visual field deficits, and all of them had improvement quickly, within several weeks. Five weeks is the longest time for improvement of disc edema and vision. Um, and they all had intravitreal avastin, although one did not have topical aqueous suppressants. So kind of the takeaways from this study, uh, first of all, I think agreeing with Dr. Najia, there's a need for a reliable treatment option for NIO, and because of its relatively prevalence and um, visual devastation it can cause. And <clears throat> the studies so far have not been very exciting about solo uh, intravitreal avastin or topical aqueous suppressants, but combination therapy might be an exciting way to look at a more rapid recovery of vision as well as a higher rate of recovery than would happen by natural history. Um, and although we don't have the power in our five patient case study to really extrapolate statistical significance, it did have some encouraging results since all five patients showed improvement of some sorts, which is not what you would normally expect. Um, but at this point, like I said, five patients is not enough power um, and we need more studies looking at combination therapy or even just one of the two study, one of the two therapies by themselves. And also I think Dr. Najia study, you know, anything to treat this disease is a, a great um, option for us to have. Um, so that's all. Thank you. And thanks for the first place vote for second year presentations. <laughs>